Okay, good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. So, my so, name is Mr. Nasio. And today we will be taking you through the production of the production. So, so, before uh, we embark on the business of the day, I would like to take a roll call. Uh, keep crew Evanson. Good. Uh, Benson Demiso. Uh -huh. uh, proximal. Present. We will be looking at uh, the production of pig iron and specifically today we shall look at uh, the iron ores that are used in the production of pig iron and uh, other charging materials apart from the ores that are used in the production of pig iron. So by the end of the lesson you should be able to state the various types of iron ores and uh, the additional charging materials in that are used in the blast furnace and their effects on iron. It's important for us to know the meaning of an iron ore. So what is an iron ore? An iron ore is simply any mineral body from which we can extract iron economically. So iron ores can be classified into uh, three categories. We have the oxides, we have the carbonates, and we have the sulfides. Under the oxides, we've got the magnetite, we have the hematite and we have the limonite. For the carbonates, uh, we only have one. We have a uh, siderite. And uh, for the sulfides, we have uh, the pyrites. Let us uh, uh, look into these uh, four, five types of iron ores into details, a little bit of details. So first of all, we have the magnetite, which is usually black in color and has uh, an iron percentage ranging between 60 to 72% but it's not uh, recommended for production of uh, iron because uh, it is difficult to extract iron from magnetite. Number two, we have got hematite, which is usually red in color, and it has 60 to 70% iron, and it is usually widely used for production of pig iron. We've got limonite, which is uh, brown in color, with uh, 40 to 60% iron, and then we've got uh, siderite, which is yellowish white or gray, with 35 to 48% iron. And lastly, we have pyrite, which is usually pale brass yellow, with 30 to 40% iron. But it is not recommended for the production of pig iron because the iron produced from uh, this, this ore is usually of low quality due to the presence of high percentage of sulfur. So before we look at uh, the types of materials that uh, are used uh, in the production of pig iron, uh, we need to understand uh, the impurities that are present. So first of all, we have got impurities in terms of uh, oxides of silica, alumina, lime, soda, potash, and magnesia. And we have got also the sulfates. We've got phosphates. Apart from that, it's important for us to note that uh, most of our iron ores uh, were either in carbonate form, oxide form, or in sulfide form. For example, the most commonly used material for extraction of iron is uh, hematite, which is uh, a composition of iron and oxygen. It's an oxide. Therefore, apart from removing impurities, we shall also be required to remove the iron from the oxygen. In other words, we shall have to remove the oxygen from the iron so that we remain with the iron as our interest material. What do we need to uh, so as to extract iron? First of all, of course, we shall need the iron ore itself, which is a, a source of iron that we are looking for in this particular production. And we've got the fuel, uh, commonly called coke, Coke is basically essentially carbon. So the coke is usually used as a fuel to provide the heat and it also used as a reducing agent that is to take oxygen away from the iron. And then we have limestone which is normally used as a fluxing agent that is for removing impurities from the iron ore. So in a typical blast furnace uh, we have our 
charging materials uh, being admitted from the top. Uh, the charging materials, as you've seen, uh, they include the iron ore, the cork, and the limestone. And at the bottom, we have uh, our hot air blast to support the combustion. So uh, we shall look into details uh, the operational and construction features of a blast funnel in the next lesson. But today it's important for us to appreciate that uh, we have three charging materials, the iron ore, the cork, and the limestone. So we have seen that uh, the cork is usually to provide heat because uh, in this process, we need our iron ore in molten state. And then we have cork, which you have seen is used as a reducing agent and uh, as well as providing heat. We've got uh, limestone, which is acts as a fluxing agent. That is, it combines with impurities to form molten slag. Now, basically, molten slag uh, floats on top of the molten iron. So at the bottom of our blast furnace, we have the molten slag being tapped off from the, from the top of uh, the molten iron, whereas the molten iron is being tapped off from the very bottom of the blast furnace. Okay, that is all that uh, I had today. So uh, I need us to go through what we've learned today. So question number one, name four types of iron ores. Okay, we have Jacqueline, your hand is up. We have magnetite, we have hematite, we have sedirite, and pyrite. Very good. Now the second question is, uh, why is magnetite not recommended for the production of pig iron? Yes, proximal, I see your hand is up. Uh, magnetite is not recommended because it's so difficult to extract iron from it. Very good, proximal. Now the third question is, why is pyrite not recommended for the production of pig iron. Here is Paul. I see your hand is up. Paul, are you with us? Okay. Yes, yes. yes. <clears throat> it is not recommended because of, it has a low quality iron, yes. low quality produced yes. due to sulfur content. Yes, very good. Now, the last question today is um, what are the three charging materials used in the blast furnace and what are the effects on the production of pig iron yes i can see proximal you want to uh, wrap for us the lesson yes go ahead charging materials number one iron ore which is the source of iron we have cork number two which is reducing agent which is the source of heat again and then finally we have what is called limestone as a fluxing agent our lesson has come to an end so i would like to leave you with an assignment so i would like you to go and discuss the operational and construction features of a blast furnace otherwise i would like to wish you a nice day until we meet next lesson